prepaid expenses and escrow expenses. What the heck are those that I'm seeing on my papers? My name's Evan Common, your VA loan originator, here to help explain. So when you get an initial loan disclosure, you have a loan estimate. And on that loan estimate, there's two sections, F and G, that break out prepaids and initial escrow payments. And then if you happen to get your closing disclosure towards the end of the loan or somewhere in the middle of the process that further refines those numbers, you'll see another still section F and G that break out prepaid expenses and escrow expenses. Now, you might see those and go, what the heck are those? You know, I noticed that there's cost to this, there's title and there's the lender fees. Some of those make sense to me, but what the heck are prepaids and what the heck are escrows? Let's look first at prepaids. So prepaids right there, typically are what you're doing is exactly that. You're prepaying certain expenses. So the main one, for example, you're gonna see on there is insurance. So when you get a quote for your home, be it if it's a purchase that we're working on here, you're gonna go get an insurance quote. They say it's say $1,500 a year. Well, you need to pay for that first year of insurance. So you're gonna see that first year of insurance paid there unless you pay for the insurance separately on your own. That's perfectly fine. Just make sure that you get us an invoice for that or paid receipt so we can make sure we calculate for it. But we need to have that first year paid for. If you don't wanna pay for it separately, then we can have it all paid at closing and that's where you'll see insurance up there. So generally, if it's an initial estimate, your initial loan estimate, you'll see the actual quote if you got it to us, or you'll see an estimate for that amount in that section. Now, the other items that are on there are generally prepaid interest and any prepaid taxes. Taxes, not common. We're going to see a whole lot there until we refine numbers later on, but know that there could be some prepaid taxes if there's a tax bill due for stuff. But for let's focus on interest. That payment's on there. That's for the prorated payment that you're making at close. What do I mean exactly by that? Well, let's say you close at the end of October. You close like October 30th or whatnot, and there's 31 days in October. Well, there's technically a day there that you gotta make sure you prorate that you're missing that you gotta pay for for interest. Because remember, your first payment, if you closed in October, isn't November 1st, it's gonna be December 1st. But that doesn't mean you just skip payments. That means you gotta make a prorated payment for when you close in October. So if there's one day that you own the home, and we and you're not making the payment for that two months later you're making it at closing so we got to adjust and say hey you got to pay for that one day prorated amount at close if you close early in the month that could be a lot of days so you might see if you closed early in the month on october like 5th then all of a sudden we're prorating for 20 whatever days there right so all of a sudden then that prepaid interest could be quite a bit higher that said though still remember your first payment isn't going to be due november it's going to be due december and your December payment is really paying for your November. And then what you paid at closing in that prepaid interest category is you paying for the prorated time that you own the home in the month that you closed. That's the basics of what prepaid interest is. And know there, kind of the trick of keeping it lower is if you close later in the month, if you're okay paying more at closing prepaid interest, you can close earlier in the month. And the benefit there though, is that your first payment is further away. So there's pros and cons both ways, but just know that's what affects prepaid interest. So there's a prepaid column. So let's look at F, prepaid items. Mainly you're gonna see insurance on there and then you have some kind of prepaid interest and maybe some taxes on there as well, depending on tax bill cycle and everything. Now let's look at escrows, right? So section G that you'll see on your loan estimate and that you'd see on your final closing disclosure as well. For the escrows, this is where you gotta build up a little cushion. Effectively is where we're making an account for you that gives you a cushion on general you'll see there for taxes and for insurance. Most scenarios you're seeing about three months for each of those. Maybe a little higher on taxes for sometimes if we need to, or if we have another big bill coming up, one of those might need to adjust a little bit. But for those escrows, think of it this way. That's an extra cushion so that if you stop making your payments, the lender or servicer for everything has a little bit of extra money. We've got some extra money to effectively make sure that taxes and insurance are taken care of. That's why escrows are there. Now, fun fact, you can also do what's called waive your escrows. In most scenarios, for us, we work a lot of VA loans, obviously. We can do that on most VA loans. You just ask me and we'll make sure we put in the request. Usually it gets cleared relatively easy, sometimes not, but we can usually get those waived if you wanted. And that means you wouldn't have that cost at close. So you wouldn't have to put those funds up to build that reserve. However, you're still responsible for paying your taxes and your insurance. And we're still going to need that proof or actual payment of a year's worth of insurance that we just talked about up in the prepaid section. So know that's what escrows are. That's where when you hear people say, oh, are you escrowing your account? That means generally, hey, your principal interest payments for your mortgage plus your taxes and insurance 
are going to cover everything. So you're going to make one payment, and then that payment's going to come to us as your lender or servicer, and then we're going to fill up your escrows, and then as your tax bill comes due and your insurance comes due, that escrow account pays those bills for you. That's when you have escrows. And the escrows on your closing statement, that usually is like that three months, give or take range, that's building a little bit of cushion and padding in there for that escrow account. Now, when you go to sell down the line or if you refinance, then that escrow account's gonna come back to you. Whatever happens to be in that escrow account at the time, you're actually gonna get a check cut back for that. And they should be to you within 30 days of when you either sell your home or refinance in the future. Now, let's go back to talk about refinances there briefly. If you're refinancing your home versus purchasing, know that when we're talking about those prepaids, insurance, for example, on a purchase, we're generally gonna need that every time for it. On a refinance, we may or may not. It just depends on where you're at in the insurance cycle. So hopefully that helps explain a bit about what those prepaids and what those escrows are, because those can be a big cost on your initial loan estimate and on your final CD. Sometimes people will look at something and it'll be like, man, you look at it, we have our own costs to it. The title's very, very minimal too, but boy, you have like a big insurance policy. It really balloons that prepaid and escrow account. Then that can really impact your cash due at closing. That's why it's important for us. If you're working with us, ultimately make sure you send us finance examples and we can get you ideas on what a rough look looks like for that prepaid and escrow account. My name's Evan Coppin. Hopefully this helps demystify a little bit what prepaids and escrows are. Hope this helps you go out there, win a home with VA loan. Take care.